A perfume of a bygone era, a love story, an afterlife, a new beginning. Hi, I'm Gabby and welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition, where we talk about everything but, well we talk about everything which is to do with fragrance. And if you are a returning viewer, I hear you and I see you and I appreciate you very much. But if you are a new viewer and you've just clicked on to me, then welcome to my channel. As I say, my name is Gabby and I review fragrances. I do different fragrance renditions and top tens and all things, whether it's celebrity, designer, niche, indie. But today we are focusing on another fragrance from the house of Papillon Artisan Perfumes. So, this fragrance that I'm reviewing today by Papillon, I have a little sample here, is called Angelique. And I have to say, when I sprayed this fragrance, when I smelt this fragrance, I've used it, I've road tested it a couple of days, when I smelt this fragrance, it, it gave me a melancholy feeling, which isn't a bad feeling. Um, it gave me a feeling of nostalgia. And it gave me a feeling of at peace, which it's quite unusual for me because as you know, probably I'm quite a hectic person. This fragrance, it, it evoked such emotion within me. And I absolutely will say that I absolutely do like this, well, I not absolutely like this fragrance. I absolutely do love this fragrance. So I'm just saying that now. Um, this fragrance came out in 2004. 14, I do believe, or 2015. The perfumer is Liz Moores, and she is a brilliant perfumer. Um, she has six fragrances, I do believe, in her catalogue. There is a seventh one due out in July. Um, but this fragrance by Papillon is called Angelique. Now I'm going to spray this just on my hand here. So the notes. The notes, it has oris, which comes from the root, I, I think from the iris flower. It has white champaca, which is a warm, heady floral. I need to spray a little bit more. Just a little bit, just there. You see the sheen it gives. The concentration, it's an eau de parfum, but the concentration feels like an extrait de parfum, um, which is higher in essential, higher in oils. So the oils used in these fragrances are completely off the scale. That warmth, that headiness from the white champaca is stunning. And it has a slight herbaceousness from a mimosa, which I do believe is a yellow floral. So it has yellow florals. It has that oris, which gives it that little bit of butteriness, which I really, that bit of powderiness, which is so comforting and so it's alluring yet angelic. A little bit of woodiness as well from the cedar wood. And as it dries down after about an hour to two hours, the frankincense does come through. Now this fragrance does change. But I will say with Liz's fragrance, they do change a lot. So they're not really linear. And this fragrance isn't linear. That powderiness is still there, but 
the florals from the champaca and the mimosa intermingle and intertwine. It's a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. The longevity of this fragrance is quite good as well. Um, I know I have a little sample here, but I can smell this fragrance radiating off of me. It's, it's like wrapping yourself in a little cashmere blanket. It's just, it's so angelic and ethereal. Absolutely stunning. I will link below the website down below that where you can purchase um, Liz's perfumes. I'm not paid at all. This came from my own money. And I have to say that a purchase has been made. Yes. <laughs> so I will review that. For, I haven't reviewed it yet. Oh, it's absolutely stunning. The sillage, it gives a lovely scent trail. This, the scent trails on all of the fragrances that I've tried are off the scale, really is. Now, you don't need to overspray with these fragrances at all. You really don't. It's so beautiful. Now, I am going to equate this fragrance to a film. Because as you know, I, I love films as well. And I love, my film genre is not typical of a lot of the masses that like films anyway. The, the film I'm going to equate this to is a film called Somewhere in Time. And it came out in 1980, so it's a fairly old film now, with Jane Seymour, Christopher Reeve, and um, Christopher um, Plummer. So these three, Jane Seymour, Christopher Reeve, and Christopher Plummer. Now, it's first of all set in 1972. He's Richard, uh, Christopher Reeve is a playwright called Richard Collier. And um, in a show, this elderly lady comes up to him and says to him, come back to me. And she puts in his hand, his pocket, uh, an Edwardian watch, a kind of like a, not a wristwatch, a watch that is handheld on a chain. And she dies that evening. Now he is left feeling, I know this lady from somewhere before. He goes to her house. Her housekeeper says she has died. He plays a piece of music and it is, um, the piece of music is by, oh, the, it escapes me now. I'm just looking on my notes here. The, um, the piece of music, it's Rhapsody on a Theme by Paganini. And it's from a music box. And he has a bit of a epiphany moment. Basically, I hate saying that word basically, but he goes, he has a bit of writer's block and he goes to visit this um, hotel in Michigan. I think it, it's the Grand Hotel in Mackinac Island in Michigan. And he sees a picture of this woman, of this young woman Jane Seymour and it's from 1912 and it's about film it's about time travel quintessentially and he returns back to 1912 and it's a love story and Christopher Plummer who is her guardian is wary of him and tries to separate the two and there is a scene in it where she is walking along and the, the, the time of day, it, it's just dimming. And actually there's another fragrance by Guerlain called um, L'Air Bleu, which is the bluish shower. And this fragrance has a little bit of a reminiscent of that. It has a bit of a, just a little bit of a nod to it. And 
because of the powderiness and I envision her wearing this fragrance because it is from that bygone time, it's from an era where time basically stood still, it was a much quieter time and a much more peaceful time and it was 1912 so it was just before World War II so you have to imagine that at that time everything was so peaceful just before the assassination of Franz Duke Ferdinand in Austria and then World War I and you know and we endured that awful war and he meets her and he falls in love with her and ultimately he loses her. She is a theater actress and there's a scene in that film where she is talking and she is looking directly at him. And the emotion, oh, I'm getting it. the emotion that it evokes is quite overwhelming. And this fragrance you feel that she is wearing is, is all encompassing. This, this fragrance all encompasses that film. And ultimately, he picks up, the playwright Christopher Reeve picks up a 1980 or a 1979 dime. And as soon as he picks that up, after they have had their love affair, he goes back to present day and he can't get back to her. And you see him drifting from her and he is so overcome with grief that ultimately his demise is he dies of a broken heart in that same hotel room present day. And he eventually finally meets her in the afterlife where she meets him. And this fragrance, I feel, captures that, that essence, that Edwardian era where people were just... I feel that sometimes, I feel that that era and the 1920s, it just, at a time I resonate so much with, with that era and this fragrance is so beautifully created, ethereal, angelic, it's loving and it's melancholic and it is when you are in an hour of need and you're wearing this and it comforts you. This fragrance to me is a comfort for the soul. That's the only way I can describe it. And this 100% will be a full bottle worthy To come, it's magical, it really is. But then the, the fragrances all are. So that was the fragrance Angelique. I know I talked a lot about the film, but I had to use that film. Go check it out somewhere in time. It's a beautiful love story, beautiful. Um, I had to equate that fragrance to that film because it captured it quintessentially. So what are your favourite fragrances that are soul comforting to you, that comfort the soul, that are cosy and warm and inviting and magical? Comment down below. But until next time, you've been watching another edition of The Fragrantition. And as I always say, like the song, be young, be foolish, but be happy. Till the next time. Ciao for now.